He's not quite as big as the other new models in Saga of the Beast, but this guy has some very interesting rules, and we can now see his full datasheet from the box. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today brings us to another new leaked datasheet from the Saga of the Beast box with Makari, Gazgore Thracker's Gretchen Standard Bearer. In the background, Makari is the luckiest Gretchen alive, serving as Gazgore's banner waver for 9 full years before being unceremoniously sat on and fed to a squig. Either this last incident is just Imperial propaganda, or Gaskell has been volunteering new grots to take Makari's role, as he very much seems to be back with the boss as per normal. So let's take a look at his new datasheet and see what this abnormally lucky Gretchen can do for us on the table. So Makari is an HQ choice for Codex Orcs, which is interesting in itself because he is the only Gretchen HQ choice that we have available at the moment. Even the Red Gobbo, that Gretchen that got Legends rules over Christmas, was only an Elite's choice, so it is quite funny thinking about Orcs being bossed around by a mere grot. He's power level 3, we don't know his points cost yet, but based on Games Workshop's current releases, I'd imagine that power level 3 will equate something in the region of 40 to 60 points, and for which end of the spectrum that he falls on will definitely make a big deal as to how useful he is in-game. For a Gretchen model, he has a surprisingly decent profile. He has a movement of 5 inches, weapon skill and ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength and toughness 3, where grots are normally 2, a mighty 4 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 plus save. Now, interestingly, Makari has the rule suspiciously lucky. This confers an absolutely hilariously strong 2 plus invul save. So against a lot of attacks, he's going to be far, far more tanky than a standard Space Marine Captain or something like that. He'll still definitely go down to weight of fire, but 2 plus invul saves are ridiculously strong. And even at toughness 3, this makes him into a complete tank of a unit. As funny as it is, I'm really not sure whether giving him a 2 plus invul save is really the best idea from a thematic gameplay point of view. Even though I admit it is very funny, it is just a little bit daft that he could be standing in the open tanking repeated las cannon shots and just completely laughing them off, and even if one does get through, he could use a command point reroll just to shrug it off anyway. The Dark Eldar Archon's Shadow Field is a similar version of this rule, except that he explicitly cannot reroll failed saves, and once you take the first wound, the Shadow Field goes for good, and getting through that can be a complete pain if your opponent keeps on rolling well. For this one, you sort of have to get through that four times over and he can still command reroll it, so Makari is just going to be hilariously tough. You could even throw him into close combat with most units, and he'd be absolutely fine for a turn or two just to tie them up. So with 4 wounds and 2 up invul save, his durability is just through the roof. He's not exactly a great source of damage output though, he's only got 2 attacks at strength 3. He does have his weapon called Makari's Stabber, which is a strength user weapon with damage 1, and if you roll a 6 to wound, then it inflicts d3 mortal wounds rather than its normal damage. So occasionally he might get lucky, but that D3 mortal wounds is only going to come into effect once in every six times he fights. So aside from being an annoying durable tank of a unit, his main benefit is going to be his buffs that he can give with that standard. So let's take a look at those now. First up we have Gazgul's War Banner, which means that when he's near Gazgul, he essentially acts as a pain boy to orc goth units. So provided Makari is within 3 inches of Gaskell, any Goth Orc unit within 6 inches of Makari will ignore wounds that they take on the roll of a 6+. plus. Note that unlike the Pain Boy, this isn't limited to Orc infantry, so this is a durability increase that can also help, say, Goth Battle Wagons, Goth Morkonauts or Gorkonauts, and of course this is a buff that can also help Gaskell himself. A 6+, plus Feel No Pain will only help him be even more annoying to kill than he already is. Honestly, just for being an annoying distraction character and giving a 6 plus feel no pain type save to Gaskell, it might be enough on his own to justify his inclusion. Next up, we have Accidental Figurehead, which is an interesting buff to Gretchen, where friendly goth Gretchen units can use his leadership instead of their own while they're within 12 inches of the model. This one's a little bit weak, to be honest, as he is only leadership 6 and Gretchen a leadership 4, so it's only plus 2 leadership to Gretchen units. A lot of the time, if they are taking casualties, it will just be better to have them near a war boss or runt herd to stop them running away. I guess it might save a Grot's life once every so often, but when they're only 3 points a model, it doesn't really make all that much difference. Next, we have that suspiciously lucky for the 2 plus inball save that's just a bit mental. And finally, we have Keep Up, which is basically a rule to allow him to keep up with Gazgall Thracker when they're nearby. If he starts the movement phase within 3 inches of Gazgall, then he'll get to move 7 inches, which is basically the same as Gazgall Thracker's move, which will allow him to keep up with the boss and keep that banner waving. Makari is a Gretchen, which means that he does have the normal disadvantage of not being able to use most Orc stratagems, which is a little bit unfortunate. 
And if you are thinking about teleporting Gaz into battle, then he's not going to be able to join him because he's not able to use the stratagem as well. So Makari is going to be used more if Gaz is starting on the board rather than in deep strike. I think as to whether or not he's going to be running competitive lists really depends on his points cost. If he is just something like 40 or 45 points, then it really isn't the worst deal ever for a model with a 2-up inbox save and 4 wounds in the first place. Once him and Gaskell do reach the lines, he could be an absolute nuisance, tanking Overwatch and potentially tying up very fighty characters, where unless they deal mortal wounds, he'll laugh off the vast majority of damage. I think he'll be most useful if you are using Gasgol in combination with a horde of goth orcs so that pain boy effect can come into a league of its own, but even if you are just buffing Gasgol with it, getting extra durability on an already very durable model certainly is a decent benefit. It remains to be seen if Makari can get a warlord trait, though I admit it would be a little bit daft to have your nominal warlord to be this guy rather than Gasgol. I'm kind of surprised they didn't include a rule in the datasheet to prevent him from being technically commander-in-chief when he's standing right next to the big boss. I guess we may find out more in either Saga of the Beast or an FAQ further down the line. Overall though, even though we don't know the points cost yet, it looks like Makari definitely has potential to be included in competitive orc lists, though he certainly is more use in the Goths clan as opposed to things like Evil Sons or Death Scores or anything. I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing more orc reviews later this week. I'm not sure if Games Workshop will show anything off today or not, but if they do, I'll be right on it and making a video as soon as possible. And if not, then we'll be focusing on some deployment-related strategies later in the day. So I guess we'll see how it goes. In any case, plenty of orc and space wolf content coming up over the next couple of weeks, so feel free to subscribe to Orspex Tactics if you'd like to see more. And if you'd like to support the creation of these videos, I do have a Patreon page that's down in the description below. Making the videos does take quite a lot of time, and the Patreon page is what keeps it all going, so if you are watching regularly, any support is greatly appreciated. Of course, a big thank you to all of you who are already supporting. The channel wouldn't be anywhere near what it is today without you guys. In any case, thank you very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.